that mean the music gets started now? Yep. Oh. Now we're rolling. Good stuff. I think I might switch it up and wear a beanie for the broadcast. Mm-hmm. What I think I'm gonna do. Alrighty. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hello, everybody. It is. I'm wearing a beanie. <laughs> uh, this is awesome. Man, I feel um, left out. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Head to tire. Um, it's no, me. That's wrong. <laughs> you look like one of the idiots from uh, Monty Python Flag Circus. That's great, uh, man. That is awesome. It's uh, Sunday, May twentieth, and that means it's time for a cross check again tonight on the show. We have Jake Thompson, multi-time <laughs> nominated Naha guy, and then he's a finalist this year. He won last year, so he's. Totally a complete baller and stuff. Uh, with me as always, co-host Damien. Yo, over there. What's, up? what's up, man? Holmes. How was your week? I was good. You know, I did some hair and I drank a lot, and it's pretty much it. It's How good time. It's good time. Busy, busy couple of weeks in the salon since I last talked to you. Then. Oh yeah, because uh, we actually like my boss closed down the shop for May Long. Because uh, we never get a long weekend ever, so he's like, "This year we're having a long weekend," so everyone was all packed. He, he closed it for what? May long, holiday. What's what's May long? It's I, I, is that a Canadian thing? It's a I, thing. I think so. On on May in May, uh, there's a weekend. It's always a long weekend, and everyone always goes camping and drinks a whole bunch. Whoa! Yeah, it's kind of like a national, like everybody in the world. So it's like a very spread out Coachella. Yes, it's it's like a Glastonbury with no fence and no music. <laughs> awesome. Do do people bring guns to this? Are you a very rural people with? Um, I'm hunting? not rural, but I live in a rural area, so you know you don't want to dress up like a deer and wander through the forest. <laughs> but it's called Red Deer, so I guess Red Deer Festival is a very dangerous time. And it is, out. man. Half our population goes every year. <laughs> Oh, What's what new I... with you? How's your week? My week was great. Uh, salon hunting again. Um, looking for a space to open a place. So that's an ongoing journey. We found a really cool place in uh, North Park, in, uh, which is a neighborhood in San Diego. And it's kind of in this undeveloped place. And we found this awesome space. I'm like, this is it. It's got like floor to ceiling wind- it? Floor to ceiling windows. Man, I can't talk. Um, and so, you know, anyone that's opened a salon, when you look at the place, you're like, oh, this is the spot. This is the one. And, you know, real estate people like to do this evil thing where they book other people at the same time you're looking at the place yeah. to come look at. Oh, look how and much so, people want to buy this place. Ah. Yeah, yeah. And so this other cable, cable. couple <laughs> came in. Cable. Oh, that's uh, a couple coming into a place. The cable came in. And... Uh, Man, you just, it's anytime people that have been looking for apartments, when you see someone else in your space that you already like, you're like, God damn it, I freaking hate you. I will destroy you. And so then you like, you're like, I'm dressed better than them. I'll, I'll get this freaking place. And so, yeah, it's this thing like, oh, I'll, I'll sign a 20 year lease. But, anyways, the place ended up being, uh, they wanted $4 a square foot. When everywhere else around there is going for like a dollar seventy-five, two dollars a square foot, Ooh. so that was way too much. But you know, the it used to be a dispensary, which is uh, basically mm-hmm. in California we used to have pop stores, basically, <laughs> and so it used to be one of those. So they were getting that. But I'm so glad it was because the landlord was crazy and wanted a whole lot of money, rather than driving by and seeing it be a yoga studio or anything. Yeah. You know, that would have been bummed out. And so, yeah, that happened, but we're still looking, and hopefully uh, we find something, something soon. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I guess moving on, the other big news that's happened in the past couple of weeks, uh, Godfather has passed, Vidal Sassoon passed away, um, and the amazing thing, you know, it was amazing, because I got... 900 friends on Facebook or something like that. Almost a thousand. And I think 
if I have a thousand, probably about nine hundred seventy-five of them are hairdressers, and so my feed was just filled with Vidal all day, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it was pretty crazy, man. It's, it was a really sad day. I took out my anger on a company that slapped their logo on his picture, and yeah. that made me feel better. You can go to uh, the Cross Check TV blog, the Josh Exo <laughs> blog, and read that if you want. But yeah, uh, so, as a younger hairdresser into the business, how did that affect you? Because you know, was someone that was kind of always there ever since I started the yeah. business. I don't know, man. It just made me sad because, yeah. like, I ne I I knew he was uh, you know a human being, but I kind of never thought he would die because he's just yeah. been around forever. And like, talk about healthy living. Um, the guy was all about you know stay in power. No, oh, I mean, you, you watched the movie, and, you know, I think it was 80 at the time he was doing the movie, and he's still yeah. doing, like, yoga yeah. stuff that I can't even do at 37. <laughs> it's really hard. And, uh, no, amazing guy. But, you know, I, the interesting thing about it is a lot of people are asking, like, what's next in the industry? What's, you know, at, uh, you know what's going to be a major drag is now, like, there's going to be, you know, a couple months morning period where people aren't going to comment but after this everybody's just going to be saying blah 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 is the next Vidal Sassoon like uh, every every company it, it it doesn't make sense because you know yeah he was a figurehead but you know he hasn't really done anything he didn't really do anything hair related and I'm I'm not bashing it I'm not mm -hmm. you know I don't want people to start raising the pitchforks but hair wise you know, he passed it off to Roger Thompson and Christopher Brooker a long time ago. So, th if anyone was the next Vidal, they've already been. So, yeah. hair buys, I, I think it's some people will use as a catchphrase, who's going to be the next Sassoon. But, yeah. you know, if, if there was an next Sassoon, it was already 40 years ago when he passed it on to mm -hmm. Roger and Christopher Brooker. So, yeah, I, I think it's... Yeah, I definitely agree with that. But... You know, I think hopefully it raised awareness uh, to people of how badass you can be as a hairdresser. Yeah. You know, and if you just go out there and fucking do things yourself and just start putting out content, you if don't need not, it. If you're not afraid to get hit by Michael Caine driving a car, then success will be in your future. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. and if anything is, you know, seeing all the love for him and everything like that. It just, it really kicked me in the ass to see what is possible for hairdressers out there and what an impact hairdressers can make out there. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I just... It kind of uh, made yeah. me happy that um, non-hairdressers, you know, kind of knew what was going on and knew that he died and kind of had a sense that um, he, he was someone important. And that's what I, I took from it, I think. Yeah, I don't know. It fired me up. I just I want to do something amazing now. So that's my take on it. So I guess uh, speaking of amazing people, we should get to our guest who's politely been waiting this whole time. Yeah, this whole five minutes, eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, and like you guys at home can't see him, but I can look over at my other monitor and see him just kind of like staring off in the distance there, waiting. <laughs> oh, poor twirling yeah. his beard. Yeah. So everyone, welcome to the. The show, Jake Thompson. Hey, Jake, how's it going? Uh, it's going good, man. How are you guys? Awesome. Super awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Three I... awesome don't make a right, right? <laughs> right, bro. You should. Right. Uh, you should. I saw. You, I saw you playing with your new toy. You should show the cat. Show the folks at home. Um. Well, you know, I thought I'd bring this up because Damien <laughs> got a toy a few. Uh, yeah, and now you're gonna one up me. Oh. And, <laughs> And I got a new toy a few days ago, and I love my new toy. I've yet to use it in the studio, but I'm very excited to use it. So, yeah. I'll, I'll be your model, Jake. <laughs> Going to do a love construction sometime. That's exactly what I'm looking for, Josh, is a bearded beanie guy. The, the body hair hey, collection. <laughs> paint me like one of your pretty French girls, Jake. <laughs> You know, we we could put you in a leotard. It would go. Uh, it, it would be really good. It, it really would go sexy. Viral. 
it, it would go viral. And, I think uh, your collection would have to be called Put the Lotion in the Basket. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> All right. So let's get into the cross track. Uh, Jake Thompson, how long have you been doing hair now? Uh, I've been doing hair for roughly about almost 16 years. A little over 16 years. I started hairdressing. You know, it's so funny, actually. My mom uh, influenced me into hairdressing, and she was, she came to me one day, and, you know, like most kids, I was kind of in a purple haze when I was in high school. And being in a purple haze, my mom, she comes to me, and she says, you know what, Jake, I want you to start thinking about what you want to do when you grow up. And I was like, okay. And so I thought about it for a few days, and we continued the conversation, and she says, have you thought about it? And I was like, yeah, I've thought about it. And this is before, this is way before the Food Network was cool and cooking was, had this glamorous look to it. And I said, what about being a chef? And she's like, a chef, huh? Well, let me, let me ask you, do you really like to cook? And I was like, uh. <laughs> she's like, well, you know, why don't you start thinking about it a little bit more? And she's like, I'm going to mention something to you, and I want you to... Just think about it. And I was like, okay. And she's like, what about hairdressing? And I was like, hairdressing? It's like, well, mom, I'm not gay. And she's like, <laughs> gay. You don't, she's like, Jake, you don't have to be uh, gay to be a hairdresser. There's a lot of famous people that are hairdressers. Have overcome their stuff. handicap. What's that? That have overcome their handicap. <laughs> right? And so she, she goes, um, and basically I was like, you know what? The only word I heard was famous, and I was like, I can do this shit. And so <laughs> when I uh, got into hair school, it was amazing because it was like me and 80 women at school, so the odds were awesome. <laughs> and, and I love women, so it just it worked out. So, did you, uh, did you start dressing the way you do back then, or was that like a development over the years? <laughs> You know, it's it's actually, it's kind of funny because um, I was always very artistic in the way that I dressed, and I was kind of a urban skater, punk kid in high school, and so of course, like, you know, you always had, you know, and I know you guys are, you guys can vouch for this, you guys remember, like, Genko jeans and all that, like, baggy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, I had stuff like that and kind of dressed more urban. So being a hairdresser just naturally fit because, you know, hairdressing, you can dress any way that you like and you can have any kind of style you, you, you want. So that pertains to the salon you work. Uh-oh. Oh. Where did Jake go? Ah, <laughs> freak out time. Dude, dude. Oh, technology. Gotta love that. Want to call him back up? Yeah, hold on call a sec. Call him back up? Alright. Do, 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 do. In the meantime... So that reminds me of when I was hey, in beauty school. Jake, you gotta... <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, am I... You guys there? Welcome back, yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry about that, dude. <laughs> Technology's uh, Latin for a piece of shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's so, what it means. Anyways, you were saying uh, you dressed that way back in her, her, her high school and whatnot. Um, uh, wait, say that again? You are saying you dressed oh. when you were younger, kind of skater-ish, and then translated yeah, to now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and honestly, like, you know, whatever salon pertains to, you know, however your wardrobe you know, you know if, if a salon has a certain type of wardrobe, you know, some salons do, some salons don't. But you know, given, given the respect, most hairdressers can have any type of style, whether it's piercings or tattoos or whatever it may be, like it's really widely accepted. So it was just a natural fit when I got into it because I was like, you know, I, I wasn't really going to conform to any sort of corporate job. So hairdressing was a, a natural thing that has just evolved from the first day I was in school to where I am now. So cool. What well, what would you say is uh can you remember anything that really surprised you when you enrolled in hair school? I mean, not really being into hair before then, like walking in those doors. 
Well, you know what's the funny thing is the smell. The smell was always something that I was really attracted to because salons have, you know, just the, the salons in general have a certain smell. So um, the other thing was being that I was male, um, I had a disadvantage to all of my female counterparts that had played with hair. Like, and I don't know if this is true for you two gentlemen, but I, everything was very, very awkward and weird, you know, curling hair, just holding hair in general. So that's what was really hard for me to grasp. And then going to a school that was really shitty, like the school I went to was so ghetto, like they didn't teach you how to really handle hair and how to form hair. I didn't learn that until maybe... Shit, I don't know, like I'd say maybe seven, eight, nine years ago. And it's, it's interesting on how, um, th th that's really what I remember was hairdressing was really hard for me, like very, very hard. Was, was there anything that really came natural to you while you're in it? Like, because I remember like working with this, not a joint, but rollers and perm rods were really, really hard for me to handle. Whereas the other girls in my class in the little freshman room were like, yeah, do, 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 do. Um, but cutting came really naturally for me. Is there anything that you gravitated to right away while you were in school? Well, I, I, I think what I gravitated to was, um, you know, cutting. I didn't understand it, but I liked to do it. And then styling. Styling was something that I knew I had a knack for, but the school I went to made it too hard. Like they made everything really difficult. And it, it, instead of, you know. I think we just lost Jake again. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to call him back. Damn you, Salt Lake <laughs> Internet. Mm. Okay, all the viewers out there, I want you to go email Salt Lake uh, Salt Lake internet providers and tell them there's a very important interview going on right now. Come on, call. Stop failing. Bad call. It's okay. We're just going to hang out and watch me drink out of brown paper there bags since that seems very popular. All right. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, dude, so sorry. Who's downloading porn at your house, dude? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that would be me. I'm so sorry, man. I gotta <laughs> shut that down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I lost my train of thought. What was that? What was I on again? I don't know. But Jake, back when you started, um, how long did it take you before you like actually started liking the work you did? Like, did you feel like you sucked at first? Oh, dude, I felt like I sucked really bad at hairdressing. Like, it was. It took me a while before I really liked what I did, mm -hmm. or I, or actually, let me rephrase. Like, let, let, let me rephrase that. It took me a while to acknowledge how bad my stuff really was <laughs> until like there was good stuff being produced. I was like, you know, when you start doing better stuff, you're like, man, like that stuff really looks like shit. Yeah. So, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, that, that yeah. makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. You know, like if your eye is trained, you know, when, you, when you're trying to train your creative eye, it's kind of funny. So that's why I always encourage people to take photos of their work because it's a natural timeline or progression of your, of your work, of just your career in general. So, yeah. yeah and it, it's one yeah. of those things I found, you know, it's that beauty school mentality where you have where you think creative. It's just putting as much crap into it as possible. Like, if you, if you think back to those updos you first did while you were in beauty school, it's like, okay, going to do a French twist and then some rolls up here, and then let's do five fucking braids around the back, you know? <laughs> it's like, you just take everything you learned and put it into one updo, you know? Yeah, and, and that's the thing is I always tell kids when I, you know, like kids are just entering into school, they're doing their first you know, first dozen photo shoots, it's like, don't put everything you have in your bag of tricks into that photo shoot. It's like, less is more. And, you know, sometimes the most minimal styles are the most beautiful styles. So, so how long did it take before you started getting some, uh, like, competition-y photo work? Like, did you start early off, or...? 
Um, did I, you know what? I actually started shooting my first, I entered uh, my first competition in 2000, I think it was 2002 or 2001. So that's the first competition I entered and I got into hairdressing. Um, I graduated in 1996. That's when I graduated from hair school. So, I mean, 2000, 2002, 2003 was the first competition that I entered, and that was Naha. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, man, I mean, I didn't get nominated. Second year, I didn't get nominated. Third year, I got nominated, though. And then I, had, and then I didn't actually get nominated for five. So, my, so 2006 was my first nomination, and then 2000... 11 was my second nomination. So, wow. So, have you pretty much entered every year since 2001 then? Uh, no, actually, no. after 2003, I took 2 years off. Um, and it was it was interesting because I had read this article like Robert Labetta is a huge mentor of mine and he had actually um, he he talked about a time in his life where he had to take a couple years off where he just wasn't doing anything creative or, and I had, I had something happen in my life where I just, I couldn't produce anything creative. Like just, there was a tragedy that was going on that didn't allow me to produce the kind of work that I really wanted to produce. So with that, I took two years off. And then when I actually came back and I started shooting again, it was interesting because there were other people locally and, you know, even in other states that, that I'd kind of seen their work before and they were getting much better. And I was just like, fuck, man. So <laughs> I had to up my ante and start producing again because it's the kids that are, it's the people that keep producing over and over and over and over and over again that just excel and just keep getting better and better. And so mm. I was getting, uh, I was getting tossed not really tossed to the side, but they were, you know, I, I, I had to, I didn't want to be beaten in the race to uh, producing amazing shit. Mm -hmm. What, now, have you, you know, a lot of people, uh, they have a natural competition that kind of makes them better. Is there anyone in the industry, and you don't have to mention names, but you can. Is there anyone where you're like, okay, I'm entering Naha this year, and I just want to beat that guy? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> like, a lot of people are like, oh, everyone together. But, like, for me, like, a lot of my success is like, oh, I'll show them. You know, <laughs> you know what, man? It is, it's, it, it's a healthy competition. You know, I, I respect a lot of the artists out there. But, you know, it, it's, it's kind of funny. Like, um, the... There's a comp you know what, th there are people, I definitely respect their work, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm all down to, you know, beat them, you know, and to show them that, you know, and again, like, they want to beat me, you know, there are people out there that it's, it's, it keeps that, uh, that competition, that's what keeps it interesting, so hell yeah. What, uh, what, uh, what drove you to wanting to enter in the the first place what attracted you to I'm gonna go for competitions you know what is um, there, there were there were a lot of people that um, you know like see for example if you're not with a manufacturer if you're not with a company that is gonna help sell your name and you're gonna help sell their name like doing shows or whatever it may be you're left to your own you know, your own entity, whatever that may be, your own brand. So competition is a way for you to compete against all of those other people in the industry and you're just, you're, you're, you're competing against them, you're competing against yourself and you're competing just to see if you can get nominated. And, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of people that have a sour taste in their mouth about competition and, you know, like if they're not nominated, they're like, fuck it, you know, I'm not going to enter like next year, whatever it may be. What a stupid fucking competition, man. <laughs> that's yeah. like, that's the version of when you hit on a chick and she just disses you and you're like, fucking lesbo. 
<laughs> You're exactly right, man. <laughs> It's like, it's, you know, don't knock it because she didn't, like, you know, pull down her pants and, you know, wave her ass in your face, you know. Just means. Jake, how, how did your uh, entries change over the years? Like, did you find yourself spending more and more money or, like, gaming it a little bit more? You know what, man? That, that's, that's, yeah, that's, it definitely makes you evaluate your work when you're not nominated, especially a few years in a row. You're just like... What's wrong with me? <laughs> it's Lord pretty funny, me. actually. So I think that. Ah. <laughs> Let's just give it a minute here. It'll it'll work itself out. Oh yeah, it will. We you made know. it quite a few minutes. You know. that time. <laughs> You're still there. Oh, Am I still, still there? there? Yeah, you froze for a second, but. Oh, all right. Okay. My God, dude! I'm just like <laughs> this dial-up sucks, you know. <laughs> dude, you gotta you gotta get a 56k modem. That 28.8 baud modem. Yeah. That's just not gonna work. Yeah. That is, that <laughs> totally. Hi, so bro. So, so, so the thing, so the thing about it is, I think that a lot of people think that you have to spend a lot of money to enter Naha, which I don't think that's a, I don't think that's true at all. I think you can do it on a very minimal budget. Um, because I've only, I've only paid, I, I, I've, I've paid for two, uh, Naha collections that over, over the past, however many years I've entered. And that's talking about, I've paid for a photographer. So, you know, a lot of times y y you don't necessarily have to go like the biggest budget ever to, because sometimes the biggest budget isn't going to get you nominated. And how my collections have changed over the years is, you know, you, you want to try and do something innovative. And I think that too many people depend too much on just one technique. And they'll do that one technique over and over and over and over again. And it's actually, dude, do something new. You know, that's what I want to say to the artist. So. All right, fair enough. Do you, uh, when, when you were entering, how much did you pay attention to what everyone else was doing? Because, like, I, I always kind of imagine there's some people out there that just say, oh, fuck it, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, forget everyone else, and then some people look what everybody else is doing and kind of try to be the best at what they're doing. Yeah, that's uh, an inter interesting question, because I can imagine some people that keep entering start trying to look for, like, some kind of algorithm in the winners. You know, like, oh, of course. okay, is there a pattern here? Like money ball of Why hair. did they win? Of course, man. You know, I, 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 I think that everybody looks at, you know, because everybody wants to get nominated and everybody wants to win. And I think that they look at, and, I, and I, this is what's interesting, is when you stop, you know, this is when I actually um, got nominated, was when you stop trying to please the Naha judges, when you... You know, that's when you actually, and you, you start producing a collection you're proud of. That's when I actually won. And I think that too many people, you know, that, that's why Naha has such a bad, like, you know, that's why there's so many people. I'm not going to enter it because everybody has to, you have to shoot it like one direction, one way. It's like, yes, there are certain people that, you know, it has a certain look to it, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to do that same thing. It's like, you know, we're, they're all artists and magazine editors and makeup artists and all those people that do the judging. So they're looking for something new anyways. They're looking for something kind of different. They're looking for something. And, I, and, it's, and it's a way to, to, to express yourself. So I think, you know, yeah, look to the past for um, uh, maybe inspiration, but I wouldn't base your whole collection off of trying to mimic the year before stuff or even three years or two years or five years before so how much um do you think it's important like what's more important the best photography possible or the best photoshop possible <laughs> oh, that's funny man um you know what dude i think that honestly it's you know w w what is uh, I think a photographer is probably way more important than um, Photoshop. And I think what would be second most important would be the model. Because a lot of times, 
if you have bad models, you have to spend so much time photoshopping them in, in the second place. It, it makes it so, okay, now you have to have a really good Photoshop person. Mm -hmm. If you have a bad photographer, that right there, you're, you know, it's not, see, see okay, so there was a, a, a collection that a photographer shot for me and they had made the, uh, the hair very, uh, it didn't have any contrast to it. It was very flat. It looked very blown out, and so I lost all the texture in it. And that's, again, like a photographer that did that. So I think you have to choose the right photographer to help, to, to honestly help um, take your vision to the next level. Because I think if they can't shoot hair and they can't shoot a model, then, dude, you're not going to get anywhere with that collection. And uh, Sorry, go uh, ahead, Josh. That's, that's one thing. Where, um, so you always do all your shooting in Salt Lake then, where you're from? Yes. Where you live? Yes. So, I assume it would be harder for you to find models than, say, if you were in L.A. Where, or New York, where a place where models seem to flock. Where do you, how do you go about finding your models? You know, man, it's it, it's, it's kind of hard to find models here because, um, you know, a really good friend of mine, uh, Humi uh, Uguchi, is, he, he, he actually got me into photography and he does a lot of shooting here and he's amazing at finding models and it's so funny because every time he finds these amazing models, they always wind up leaving out of state because they get, they get noticed and... It, it, it's, it's definitely hard to find models here because you could find somebody that's really pretty, but they don't know how to work, you know, they, they don't know how to work in front of a camera. And it, it, it can be rather difficult to find models here. It's not, ex it, it's not the most difficult, but it, it definitely can be a little more work, so. And it seems like, I, I remember back in my days doing platform work. Everyone had a different taste in models. You know, like if I worked with Robert, I knew he liked the big, tall Victoria's Secret models. Whereas, you know, Takashi definitely liked cutting the more like kind of 15 year old girl, kind of awkward that he could do funky yeah. stuff on. Like what, what's your taste and what do you look for in a model? Um, you know, in, in, in a lot of my models, I, I really honestly like, um, I, I like exotic looking women and men and somebody with, I, I would say a fairly strong, uh, jawline is fairly important and just eyes that are unforgettable. So that's what I would say I look for in a model. That'd be, and I got uh, they, they, they have to sell the look I'm producing on them, you know, because right. I'm, I'm doing so, some of my looks I'm doing are rather extreme. They have to be able to sell it. Yeah. When, mm. Now, how, how influential is your model actually on um, the look you're doing? Because I don't know when I do my videos, like I've had this one Nintendo video plan for a long time that I've wanted to do. But, you know, the, there's only one girl that I want to do it, you know, this look on and this thing on. And it, it, it boggles my mind to try and find another model to do it. And now she wants to grow her hair out, so I'm not doing the Nintendo video for a while. But for you, how, how much inspiration do you actually pull from the, the model? Um, well, you know, it, it's, uh, th there's a collection I'm creating right now that um, I've, I've pre-thought out a lot uh, three of my models already. Um, I, I want them all Eastern European descent, uh, very almost kind of like Russian looking um, because of the collection that I am working on currently right now. So I try and think of the, you know, sometimes if I know the model that I'm shooting on, that'll actually inspire me for the look that I really want to take them because I can just kind of stare at them and look at them in an awkward way to where they're, they're almost like, are you, you're, you're creeping on me. And I'm like, no, I'm just looking and I'm almost kind of daydreaming about a look I can create on them. <laughs> <laughs> so That's what I tell girls looking, all the time. Looking in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> leaning in. <laughs> I know, it's just this piece of hair right now. 
<laughs> as you're kind of awkwardly staring, you know. <laughs> wow, so. I really want to do a behind the scenes photo shoot or video shoot for you now. <laughs> <laughs> Just a montage of of Jake creeping his models out. <laughs> Just kind of looking at him, they're like, "Dude, he's so weird." <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's yeah. awesome that's kind of funny so how'd you um back when you started competing um did you how'd you get models back then like because once you're more established i imagine it's easier in some way yeah it, it is easier to get models once you're more established because they've actually they, they've seen some of your the work that you you do and you can do so they have a little more faith in you when you're Boom. Oh, oh, starting there, out. There we go. Yes. <laughs> we good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Proceed. Uh. <laughs> so when you're when you're first starting out, yeah, it is definitely hard to get models. I always relied more on the photographer to get the models when you're first starting out, because the photographer usually have have the relationships with the girls, and. Like what, what I used to do when I was first starting out, uh, this local photographer and I, we would collaborate and we would shoot uh, once a week, like every Wednesday night, like he would get a model, I would just show up with all my tools and we'd create a look. And he was building his portfolio, I was building my portfolio and we would just have like a jam, a jam session. And it was pretty much, well, what's well, really good about it is, you lost me? No, you're good again. Go ahead. <laughs> so we would just get together and have this uh, jam session, and it really honestly, you know, you, you learn how to see things two-dimensionally instead of three-dimensionally, and you, you create your, um, you know, your, your, your eye, your eye gets, like, honed, you know, each time you do it. So I would get with a photographer that has relationships with girls and then just start shooting. That's good advice. So why don't we go take a peek through some of the uh, some of the photos that you sent over. Okay. Alrighty. So oh. Okay, so so oh, should we on. There we go. Can you see that on uh, Skype? Yeah. So when did you shoot this one? Okay, so this particular this was actually uh, one of you know when I was just talking about a jam session. Jam session. Yeah, it's like a tongue twister. Um, that particular shot was fairly early in my career, actually, and the girl, the, the model was. She, what I really like about this photo is that before all the ombre and the melting of color was really popular, because this was probably, I would say, close to 12, yeah. let's say maybe 10, 12, like, like almost 12 years ago. It's aged well. well. And I think we lost Jake. And boom. In the meantime... Well, Jake's coming back. Let's check out some tweets we got. All right. The hair nerds. Oh, come on. Focus on that. Ah, oh, I can't read it. Hair nerds say, yes, we knew that Jake Thompson had stalker tendencies. Oh, there comes Jake again. That's the, I think that's the key to being a great <laughs> hairstylist, is being able to stalk the hell out of someone. Yeah, welcome back, Jake. <laughs> what up, dude? So anyways... <laughs> Okay, so so anyway, so about this collection, it was really based around the color, yeah, and then the and then the frothiness of the texture that I created, and the the fringe, like the fringe is really just is still sellable to this day, and uh, the the wardrobe was actually done by my ex-wife, and the photography was uh, done by a local photographer. His name is Justin Grant. And the post-production was done by another gentleman where he put the church in the background and whatnot. So it was, it, it was a really fun shoot, actually. So It ages well because like, I had no idea that it was that old. 
It was that old. Yes, it was, sir. All right, there's a uh, next picture, and that's more recent. Yes, this is more uh, this is this is one of my favorites. Yeah, I'll thank you. That one. Man. Thank you. Um, so this this whole collection was based around, um, well, as you can see, kind of a mummy, <laughs> Captain Obvious here. So the the whole idea was uh, my photographer Mitch, and then the woman that did the the wardrobe. It's actually my partner in the salon. It is his wife, and his name's her name's Michelle Boucher, and she killed it with the wardrobe. That's really what what actually kind of I think makes the collection stand out a lot, especially. And then I wanted to take it to another level and create all neon looking neon looking hair, and the textures I wanted to kind of mimic that old age. You know, I just didn't want to do like a backcombing kind of look. So yeah. I crimped the hair first with like a micro crimper. And then I went in and I have this double prong uh, figure eight iron. And I actually created curls on top of frizzed hair. And so that's how come you can create like this almost really frothy but still chunky looking curl. So it's very cool. Yeah, wow. thank you. Did you use any, like, how much additional hair is in that picture? You know what's so funny is the, 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 the whole collection itself are all actually, like, uh, the, this is no, this is none of their real hair. This is all yeah. uh, wigs, wigs that I made from scratch. So there's That's a pink cool. one, a green one, a purple one, and a... Um, a till, and then I think there's another one. Yeah. And it, so they're all wigs I made from scratch. So did you? Who hmm. shot this? Did you shoot this, or did you get a photographer? No, that was actually shot by a guy named Mitch Meyer. He's a local photographer. He kills it. You know, he's great. That was very cool. Let's check out the next picture here. <laughs> and so what, what really, 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 really enjoyed about this this picture was the reason why I wanted to create this is this is. This is kind of like my, my homage to Vidal Sassoon, right? Mm. And I always run into models, and this is a problem I was having for a long time, is I would run into models, and they wouldn't want to do anything to their hair. They were just like, yeah, I don't want to cut my hair. I don't want to color my hair. And so you would find these pretty girls, and you're like, fuck. You know, like, what do I mm-hmm. do? So since you couldn't do anything to their hair, and so... I created this collection. This is actually Michelle Boucher. She's the one that did the wardrobe in the last oh, wow. month collection. And so I, and her hair is really long. Like it's down to like her mid back. And so I made this wig from scratch to wow. make it look like it was her real hair. That's cool. So, and I, cause I wanted to, I wanted people to, you know, cause, cause I wanted to see first off if I could do it because I'd never made a wig that was done completely um, more classic commercial wearable hair. Mm -hmm. I've always done it to where it's all very extreme or frothy or whatever it may be. So I wanted to challenge myself to do that to, you know, play um, homage to Vidal Sassoon and what he did for, or, you know, just whatever they did for the industry. So... So how like, much uh, how much work did you did you put into making the wig? Like, did you get like a wig block and like make the wig from scratch, or did you work on like a pre-made wig? No, everything was done. Uh, every everything was done from scratch, and it wasn't done like how wigs are made. At, you know, the Cirque du Soleil shows or anything yeah. like that. It, it wasn't. So it you, was weren't, actually, you weren't wearing uh, a leotard hanging upside down, sewing individual <laughs> hairs on. <laughs> No, man, it was, it, it was done, and I made it um, all with hair. Like, it wasn't sewn. It was all hot glued, actually, and it was just glued to a regular um, uh, wood cap, kind of. That's very cool. So, so when, when do you make the decision when you're like, okay, I have this look I want to do. Ah, screw it. I'll make a wig. Um, you know what? It, it, it really comes down to... Um, if, if, I, if I know in my head it's a collection that it's going to be way too hard to talk somebody into, <laughs> I'll start immediately just making everything from scratch. So, 
And I, 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 I just tried to cut out the middleman on that because a lot of times if I can just use a pretty girl, then I can, um, then it makes it so, and then they're much more acceptable to wanting to do the shoot anyway, so. So here's another picture. Okay, so this photo was actually done by uh, my good friend uh, Humi Aguchi. Uh, he killed it with this shot. This was actually fun. This was the the model that we had. Um, she was just amazing, man. Like she was. I don't know if you ever get into those uh, creative environments where you're working with people, and there could be a makeup artist there, a clothing stylist, a photographer. You know, you've got all these artists there, and there's one person that's ruining the energy. <laughs> yeah. <of the> yeah. <laughs> there's one life ruiner. <laughs> Makeup artist just putting smoky eyes on every model. F I don't want smoky eyes. Okay, here, I'll smudge them a little bit. <laughs> it's creative. Well, um, the, you know, I, I just want to pay respect to uh, the model we work with was just amazing. She had the best energy and it just worked, man. We, we just produced these shots over and over and over and over and over again. And it just worked. So this particular collection was all done with synthetic hair. And, uh, you know, like that yakky synthetic hair. Yeah. And it was in a different... I'd, I'd never used it like that before. I'm actually going to be using um, portions of this in another collection I'm creating here very soon so because I liked it so much I kinda wanted to bring it back but with a flair you know and the the wardrobing was all done in post-production so so she's naked. How, what's that so she's actually naked in the original photo well, no completely like, naked she, she's wearing panties and a bra you know but <laughs> close and, enough <laughs> I mean I, I mean it was definitely fun to stand on the sidelines I'll tell you that you know <laughs> <laughs> hey man, we're all hairdressers, right? Especially uh, <laughs> straight hairdressers, right? That's right. I love my <laughs> so, how did um? Because I'm kind of curious about the post production on this. Like, did they combine other photos? Do you have any idea? Or did they use 3D graphics? Um, you know what? Actually, is is because the 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 wardrobe the the actual the the flying fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, we had shot. Uh, we had shot. We, we we had shot it, kind of pulling it across the the scene of the the photo, and you know we were we were using some wind. We were using some stuff to try and get it to blow on the actual girl, and it just wouldn't. Yeah. It wouldn't blow how we wanted it to blow. <laughs> With all yeah, sorts yeah. of punt right there, sir. <laughs> Too easy. Too easy. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Just like daddy. So, um, we, so we had to take all those shots that kind of had the fabric rippling and whatnot to create, um, so, it, so in the post-production, to look like it was fanning across the, the, the scene. So That was very cool. Let's check out the next one here. Yeah, this uh, th this collection I was super proud of, man. This one was uh, as much of a you know me me and Humi. Uh, this was a huge collaboration on our part. Um, he 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 killed it. He actually made the uh, the the paper. Those are actually made out of uh, uh, poster board paper, hmm. and he's, he he put his little Japanese hands to work. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a very uh, it was a very it, like like the pieces that he made were just were just sick. The hair I wanted to create hair that almost looked like steel wool and uh, almost very geometric shapes in it, but still frothy and airy. And uh, the photography was done by Humi, and the girl, yes, she was that skinny. You know, we went out for burgers after. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're done now. You can get fat. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we're like, we, we went out for like double doubles and in and out, you know. <laughs> you guys got in and out there? Yeah, man. Yeah, in and out's the best, man. <laughs> now, this picture's crazy. Is that an actual model's body or is that like poser? 
No, no, no. Yes, yes. It, 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 it is an actual model. Yes, sir. Um, so this particular collection was something very experimental. And this is when I was like sick of, you know, I, I just wanted to do my thing for Naha. And that's why when I said before that I wanted to do, once I stopped doing stuff to please Naha, that's when I actually got a win. So what it was is we took this model and she was down at my studio and I was taking regular stills of her, okay? And wherever she was wearing clothes, you know, like where her, like it's like, a, like it's a bathing suit that came all the way out to her arms, wherever she was wearing fabric, I had my other photographer friend there, his name's Kevin, and Kevin does a lot of CG animation stuff. And he has this camera that takes a 3D read of the model, right? And so as I'm taking regular stills, like he took a 3D read of that. And so he took my stills and then his, and then his, his shot back to his uh, you know, studio and he combined both of them. And wherever she was wearing clothes, he raised her skin like, um, or raised wherever, her, wherever the clothes a half an inch like it was scales like a reptile. So... That's why it's kind of, you know, that's why it looks like that. The hair was done in a way to where, I mean, I was just messing around with something and it was synthetic hair and clippers. So what I did is I took layer upon layer upon layer of hair and laid it all out and just built like one amount of color on top of the other amount of color on top of the other amount of color and I rolled it up like a sushi roll and then I fastened it boom and there we go again center and nope. I put it on the top of the head am I there yeah you're yeah. there <laughs> yeah I put it on top of the head okay so and then put it on top of the head and then just carved it out with a clipper so the whole initial piece you can start to see the inner core of it, the, the coiling. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, that was so much fun. Like that was, that was probably one of the funnest collection I, that I shot and that we collaborated on, so. That's pretty crazy. How, how many times did you have to attempt the, like rolling everything up before you kind of got stuff that looked good? Um, you know what, it was, it was actually just uh, a, a few times and um, I was trying out like different things with different colors and, and then I just decided to go for it, man. I just went for it and th like this shape just kind of evolved right in front of me and I was like, wow, like, and then the other two shapes, again, just everything evolved it, and, it's, and it's almost like working with clay when you're actually doing this type of uh, stuff. The, 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 the initial, it, it, it never comes out the same because mm -hmm. I just traveled to Canada and did all the ABAs up in Canada and I would do this uh, starting each show. Yeah, I saw you doing that, uh, the one in Edmonton. Do, do, do. And while well, Jake's gone for a minute here, um, hey everybody. Send us questions on Twitter at CrossCheckTV for Jake later on in the show. We'll go through the Twitter questions and ask them, and et cetera. Any questions or for me or for Josh, et cetera. And also, if you, you're you on our Justin TV site, you can just type into the chat if you don't happen to have Twitter. But Twitter's the easiest way to get a hold yeah. of us because we're always checking in. Hey, Josh, are you watching the chat on Justin TV? I am watching the chat on All there. All right, cool. Let's get back to the pictures now that Jake's back. <laughs> oh my god sorry about that man dude you need to feed the hamsters that are running your modem <laughs> run uh, faster yep. you little bastards <laughs> faster so, this this last picture uh is is probably my favorite of the ones you sent over because it's just crazy and this is the one for this year that you did right <laughs> or not <laughs> yes Yes, it is. Hello? Yo. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So, so wait, say, say that again? Um, I said that this last picture here is uh, probably my favorite one out of the ones you sent over. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. Um, I was... This you is know, the one for this year, right? 
Yeah, this is this one for this year, actually. And honestly, man, like, like I wanted to, because, you know, being, having, having won avant-garde last year, you know, there's kind of like an expectation of, you know, now that, you know, you, 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 you do something that works, right? And I wanted to do something completely completely different you know because again i want to win it (laughs) but this particular it was photographed by me uh like everything was i I wanted to do very minimal i I wanted to be about the hair like no less no more so first off the hair was recycled from my mummy collection really Yeah. yeah And so I recyc- I took all of those wigs apart and I recycled all the hair, adding more and turned it into a completely different texture. So first off, it was <laughs> it was it was very tedious work. Like this took me about four and a half months to, to finish. Yikes. Yeah, man. It was a lot of work. Like this one was probably like my, my most tedious collection I've ever created. So, oh. do you want to know how it was done? <laughs> sure. I would love to know how it's done. It kind of looks like you laid everything out and ironed it into sheets. Why, well, yes, Damien, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> kid, What's kid, that? Are you there, Jake? You did dropped, I cut up? Yeah. yeah, you did again. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Damn. So, how how did you accomplish this hair feat? Okay, so the, so the hair piece was done in. I first started off with, uh, well, okay, so that so that hair was. So I figure eight. So I took a hairpin, a large hairpin, and I figure eight uh, curled sections and then flat ironed it. So I started off with that base first. And so after I got that base, then I would brush out my little wess, and then I would spray it with this really heavy starch spray. Then I would slightly pull on it just a little bit, and I would flatten it with a flat iron. So I would flatten it so it was like razor thin, like pieces of steel wool. Then I would take a wave iron, and I would wave it to a point to where... I would, I would wave that piece and then I would scrunch it in my hand and blow on it to where it created like this really deep ridge like wave. And then after that, then I would take like ends of it and I would bend it in to a corner and then hot glue it and make like this little hair flower kind of thing. So That's cool. So yeah, uh, reminds me of... Uh napkins when you go to fancy restaurants <laughs> and they do the cool designs on them. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 So Jake, since you shot this one, why don't you tell us how you photographed it too? Well, um, I photographed it uh, kind of sandwiching two lights at a 45 degree angle um, directly uh, horizontal to each each shoulder. So, yeah. and did were they like soft boxes, umbrellas? They they were soft boxes. Yeah, they were yeah. soft boxes. And then I just shot uh, everything on a tripod. Uh, my camera was on a tripod, and just got that model to. You know, as, as she was standing there, like, I, I was like, I was kept describing to her, I was like, you're not really seeing your eyes, all you're seeing is your, your nose to your, your mouth, so I need you to make that focus super, super strong. So, and then shot it on a black background, and then went in and did the post-production uh, with the squiggly lines in the background, and uh, Humi helped me with that a little bit. And, uh, yeah. That's cool. How much do you, um, like, when you're shooting models, how much do you direct them? Um, I, I, you know what, it's, I always like to kind of let them know um, exactly what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. So they can either, um, you know, like, shift 
you know, I'll show them a picture like I want you to kind of move this, this direction, this direction. Uh, you have to be a little more descriptive when you're shooting with models, especially models that really aren't, you know, when you're on, the, when you're on either coast, east coast or west coast, <laughs> You're, you know, you're going to be shooting with models that know what they're doing versus in Utah, there's, you know, like some of the models know what they're doing, but some of them they don't. Like, so you have to be very descriptive in how you're directing them. So That's cool. Now, now one of the things I've noticed is, has it, has it been the avant-garde uh, category that you pretty much exclusively have entered in, then, right? What, what attracts you to that? Um, you know what? Actually, I enter in. Uh, I entered in contemporary classic this last year, uh, hairstylist of the year. Um, the year before, I entered in texture. So, you know, I, I think avant garde has just been uh, some of my work that I, I think I put the most time into, and I think that's why it gets so recognized. Is that I really enjoy my time in the studio, so I enjoy that creative process. And I think that uh, after this year, I'm expanding my horizons into uh, more stuff because I don't want to be stereotyped into just one kind of thing. So, so was, when you're when you're in the salon, do you just cut ev like day after day boring soccer mom hair, and then you come onto your photo shoot and you're like, yeah? Or are you like turning everyone in your salon into like a sunburst napkin head? <laughs> You know what? We all got to make the money, man. We are when, when we're in the salon, uh, we're doing sellable, wearable hair. You know, we're doing stuff that you know makes the money. And I think you know that's why I strive so much to be in the studio and to to shoot and to be creative. Is that it makes it so I am not. Um, I don't ever get bored with hairdressing. So no, man. But the salon life is all wearable, sellable stuff that you and I all do. So going back to Naha real quick, when you do the categories, what, what comes first, the collection? And then you decide, okay, this is going to be classics. Or do you, do you do your collection to fit into a category, or do you do the collection and then go, okay, that's going to be texture, or that's... Um, you know what? It's, it's the, the category all, like, always comes first. Always. Um, I never decide, shoot something, and then decide to put it into something. I always decide where I'm putting it first, and then shoot the collection. I think that too many people, like, they'll just shoot, and they'll think, oh, I'm going to, like, you know, enter it into this, or put it into that. Like, it needs to have a good direction before you go anywhere with it. And I think that, you know, that, that all comes down to preparing uh, your stuff before you even start. Like you, you need to have a well thought out plan of what you're doing before you start anything. So now, you you've recently in the, your, your past few collections you've switched to photographing and doing your post production yourself. What was the main driving force in going? All right, I'm going to do this DIY. I'm going to do this all myself now. Um, you know what? Um, well, number one, uh, one influence was my friend Humi. Uh, he actually was the one that inspired me to pick up a camera, number one. And so, and number two, uh, having a disconnect with photographers that shot my collection. And I would, you know, there was, there was too many times I would be slightly a little disappointed with the, the post- Productions, mm. <laughs> post productions, and just none of them were as good as me. Uh, I'm like a, I'm like a little Jake Thompson ventriloquist right now. <laughs> oh, guys, oh. we need to get those like lip things, like Conan. So God, talk, I'm I so sorry, dude. <laughs> it's cool. It's okay. Cool. We're used to it now. Yeah. We got a game of Scrabble that me and Josh have been playing every time you disconnect. <laughs> We're playing draw with friends. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that sucks. So, so can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, so with that, right, I think that there was too much of a disconnect between photographers and me, you know, like, you know, and I, I didn't want to ever stifle an artist and be like, 
no, do it like this. No, do it like this. Because artists, you know, everybody has their, um, they all have what they want to do to the hair. And, or not, not, not to the hair, but I mean, the photographer has his vision. I have my vision, you know. So I, 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 so I think, <laughs> what? <laughs> My God, I have people in the background tell me shit. Um, so I think that with, uh, I, I, I would most likely say I was sick of having a disconnect. And so I wanted to pick up my cam, pick up a camera and start learning that, uh, learning photography just in general. So That's cool. How long have you been shooting? Um, <clears throat> I've been shooting for about, I would say two years. Yeah. And are you, um, are you pretty like up on your photo skills? Are you, or like, can you go in, set up some lights, sh grab a light meter and be like, oh yeah, F stop, yada, yada. Or do you kind of like go, I kind of want the light over here, sort of, and take a picture and see how it looks. Um, you know what, man? I I would say no on that, and that's something I'm still trying to learn. Like, yeah. it's so funny. I'll always uh, like send a phone call over to my friend Humi. I'm always like, okay, dude, this is happening. Why why is this happening with the, the light? Why is this like dark on this side? And he's just like, all right, dude, you've got it set at this. Try setting it at this. And it's <laughs> funny. Like, like so. No, I would say I'm still learning it, and. Yeah. I'm more of an artist when it comes to photography. Like I'm really. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. He's collecting his thoughts. Have you noticed? Shooting it. I'm trying this. <laughs> Am I there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just came back. Okay. So, so, so more than anything, like I, I personally am. Uh, I, I, I would say no. Like, I'm still learning it, and my photographer... <laughs> Josh, have you noticed that Jake has really white teeth? He's got amazingly, amazing Our, white teeth. Our technically are not good. <laughs> Is it there? Are we good? Yeah. We yeah. good? Yeah. We're yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, man. I'm not technically really good at photography so go ahead <laughs> okay uh that totally threw off all my trains of thought my multiple <laughs> trains have been derailed his, his <laughs> trains have collided on course now yeah um so how long have you uh, owned your salon because you're also a co-owner in a salon as well right yes sir uh you know i've actually co-owned the salon now for uh, I think it's about 10 years, actually. Nine, 10 years. I might, did I just cut out again? No, you're still good. Keep going. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, 9 or 10 years is how long I've co-owned my salon. It's great, man. I, I, I love it. I love everybody at the salon. But it, it, it's interesting when you talk about roles, you know. Not everybody should own a salon, and I think there's too many people out there that think they're like, I want to, you know, not everybody should be in business for themselves and not everybody should be, you know, it, there are, just because you can hairdress doesn't mean that you should be a salon owner. Yeah. So. I see that a lot. I don't know what it is about the, the city I live in. It's a tiny little city, but, um, friggin' people start up salons and restaurants in this city. Like it's like crazy and they go out of business in a couple months and then like someone else buys it starts it up and goes out of business it's like a never-ending cycle so, yeah now how is it like you know you do platform work you travel quite a bit you've won naha you've been nominated a few times how is it working you know, as an owner in the salon, do you just come back in and they're like, yeah, that's just our boss, or do you get a lot of support from your salon team as well? Um, yeah, I, you know, it's like, yeah, they, they just kind of look at me, they're just like, oh, that's Jake, whatever, you know, like, they're, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, um, you, know, I, you know, but then again, I also get a lot of support as well, like, they're very loving, and, you know, they always show up and support, come down to Naha and stuff like that, so, 
yeah, there's a lot of support from the salon, but it, it's kind of funny. They're always just like, oh, that's 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 Jake, the the one that always you know says the dirty jokes and whatever, you know. So uh, no. that's that's pretty cool, though. That's like everybody I know. Whenever I try and do something cool, they're just like, oh, there goes Damien with his little creative things, <laughs> playing with his little creative things. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> Someday. Someday. Now, you know, I I find. You know, a lot of people's entry into like platform work and doing more mm -hmm. things with uh, in, within the industry, winning Naha is a big thing and can open a lot of doors. What kind of doors have they opened for you? And you know, what have what have you kind of done with the reputation from your wins? And what kind of things have you said no to as well? Um, you know what, man? It's there's a lot that's happened since the win. <laughs> And I don't. I, I would have to say uh, the Canadian, uh, the Canadian opportunity that uh, I had to work all the ABAs up in Canada uh, stemmed from a good friend of mine uh, named Renee, and from Naha as well. So Naha helped sell it. And I would say there's been opportunity with um, uh, L'Oreal, uh, L'Oreal Professionnel. There's been opportunity with um, uh, stuff with like Procter and Gamble, and so I mean more than anything, like it it it, it helps get you recognized and noticed uh, to these other to these 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 bigger entities, these bigger companies. So it all depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, my end goal with anything is to hopefully one day win a lifetime achievement award. So. That's my end goal with more than anything. So, you know, wherever it leads in between that, who knows? But, you know, it, it, it kind of, Naha has helped get me recognized on a much bigger scale. And it, it makes it so magazine editors know who you are and they want to publish your work, stuff like that. So it's really just all about building relationships and connecting with people that can make a difference. So. That's cool. I gotta, I gotta interrupt here and, and mention when you did the ABAs in Canada here, uh, how bizarre and surreal it was. Like, cause Jay, uh, Josh is like, yeah, Jake Thompson's gonna be. I think he's gonna be a good guest for our second show. That's pretty cool. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. And I'm walking around ABA in Edmonton. And they're like, Jake Thompson on the stage, and I'm like, what is that? Wait, this makes no sense at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's 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 one of the you know I, I think about the first time we actually met in person Jake and uh, you know it was at the bar in Long Beach the <laughs> office right. the office as we call it and that's when I was doing my little uh, that's when I was doing my weapon of choice uh, live show and I, I remember this question that you asked me while we were sitting there and uh, it's one of those things that kind of sticks with me a bit and you asked me why? Why do you do it? <laughs> why? Why? What do you <laughs> why, Josh, to get out of why? this show? You know, and uh, so that's one thing. You know, I want to ask you with uh, winning Naha and all that stuff. And you alluded to the Lifetime Achievement Award, but what drives you to keep entering every year and just keep doing what you do? Um, you know what? Uh, I don't care if. Um you know, nobody remembers me. I just don't want to be forgotten. And, you know, I really honestly do it because it keeps me busy. <laughs> Number one, I love it. I love, I, I love that I can manipulate hair in the, the, the ways that I, that I can. I like, I like the challenge and I like creating and to be really honest, I, I, I like getting recognized and I like inspiring hairdressers because, you know, people have said, they're like, man, like, how did you do that? Like, it's, it's so inspiring. And, and if I can share with them why I did something, why I did it, you know, that's going to help take them to their next level, whatever that may be. So why I do it is because I want to bring the level of hairdressing up as far as artistically and... That's why I do it. And I gotta break in here with a, a question for you, Jake, on Twitter from the Hair Nerds. Um, 
Why are you so damn sexy? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the teeth. It's the white teeth that he's got. Oh, that... And the hair nerds broke the chat. That's how awesome Way to go, are. hair nerds. You made screen. him so Way embarrassed he blushed and the whole thing just went down. Yeah. Big shout out to the hair nerds, though. These... They've been really supportive of the show. I yeah. love them. And they they're, have a really cool amazing. website, by the way. Yeah, you should so check out. if you guys get a chance, shout out to the Hair Nerds. Check out uh, thehairnerds.com. I'm so nervous. Oh, hey. Hey, we're, we're back. So they, so they made me so nervous, my video screen turned off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you are a spinning wheel now. Spinning a little, I'm thinking about it, wheel. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. So what were we talking about before? How, how damn sexy oh. he was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, oh, I've said so this a, a few can... times, but you do have some awesome hair for a Led Zeppelin cover band, Jake. <laughs> I think that's it. I think it might be the long, luscious hair more than anything. <laughs> um, cool. I got one. I got a question. Okay. Not through Twitter, but through my text messages from uh, Rob in Houston, Texas. Owns an awesome salon down there called the Element Salon. And uh, a question for Jake. How important is Photoshop at Naha? Um, you know what? I, I, I would have to... Uh, Photoshop is, is very important to the point that every photo that you're looking at is polished. And I don't... You know, I mean... There are photographers out there that are extremely expensive that can make photos look amazing naturally. Like if you're working with amazing models and you have amazing makeup that makes their skin look really dewy and they light it just right and just perfect. You know, but there, and I, I hate to say it, but there aren't a lot of photographers around that, you know, have those skills that are, I mean, aren't going to be so ungodly expensive that so Photoshop, you know, it, it's important. Just don't abuse it. I think that too many people abuse uh, Photoshop and they think that Photoshop is going to fix everything when your hair is shit or the model is shit or the, the, the lighting is shit, whatever it may be. The problem is that too many people use Photoshop to fix everything, which Photoshop's a cop-out, and that's why Photoshop gets a really bad name. Yeah. So prepare your, prepare your shit. Sorry, I said shit a lot. Um, prepare your stuff, and it'll make it so you don't have to use as much Photoshop. Um, so that, I've got two things that brought up in my head. Uh, one... This is kind of annoying. Um, I've only ever been to Naha once to like as a, a, a guest to watch everything. Um, I stood outside the front doors of it once. Yeah, I, I, I went once in 2010 and I was kind of one, I was surprised by how many Canadians were there. Josh, Josh will you know attest to that. But two, I saw a lot of photos that were like a lot of photos that were over photoshopped and I could tell they were kind of crappier photos, but they had amazing Photoshop done to them. And then a lot of photos that um, were great photos, but they were under photoshopped. Like they looked fine, but they didn't have any, th any motion blur anywhere. And there was no Photoshop backgrounds anywhere. Uh, and all of those ones, none of them won. Not a single one of the ones that was a great photo, but under photoshopped one. But a lot of the ones that were kind of average photos, but like great Photoshop work, a lot of those ones won, which kind of irritated me a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, no, I mean, that, that is really irritating. And I, I think that, you, you, you know, the, the problem is that we're all humans, right? And I don't care, but when you look at a photo and if it's, and if it's done well, you know, I mean, if it's, a, if it's a crappy photo and it's Photoshopped really well, you're just like, wow, you're going to look at it. You're going to be like, it's almost like looking at sh that, that, you know, when you go to a hair show and you see the, 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 the shiny, glistening glitter stage and you're like, ooh, shiny things. And you go walking <laughs> over to, it, you know what I mean? Like the idea behind um, like Photoshop is you have to make it look like, 
again, like if you have an amazing photographer, an amazing model, amazing hair, and then you even Photoshop it on top of that, amazing, you know, you've got an amazing photo right there. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just like, it's the same thing with edu like editing a video, Josh. Like if you got really shitty editing on a video, you're like, nobody wants to watch it. You know, it's no good. But if the Five editing, minutes of combing hair. <laughs> if the editing is amazing, you're going to be like, dude, that video is f awesome. So the other thing that popped up into my head, uh, and this is kind of just a question for you because you've done way more uh, photography, um, especially fashion and hair oriented than I have. Um, I've noticed that whenever I photograph hair color, like say I've just done a color and it's like a bright color, like a red or something, um, if I'm using flashes, when I get the photos back, uh, I get this like ridiculously vibrant color. It's like I have to Photoshop it to tone it down so it doesn't look like plastic. Does that ever happen to you? Do you know what I'm talking it, about? Is, is, as far as like hair color? Yeah, like it just, the flashes, the strobes I use to photograph with make the color ridiculously vibrant and I have to like completely adjust how I'm doing stuff. Yeah, and I and I and I and I and I, th I think honestly, um, you know, like that 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 was I think that was a problem because I shot a really good friend of mine uh, hair color collection for Naha this year, and um, like there was no Photoshop on the hair, but it looked like plastic, man. Yeah. Like, and I know that like the judges were probably like, oh, that's so Photoshop, but it wasn't, and. It, the, the color was sick. It was just beautiful. And I don't know why it didn't get nominated, but it was, I, you know, I, I don't know how to, the problem is that you, 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 you can't really necessarily, um, unless Naha changes their way to where they want the photo before post-production. And, you know, have I gotten word of that? No, like nobody knows if that's ever going to happen or whatever, but that would definitely help cut out like, because yeah. if you can, if you can send in a shot as is, it. Daisy, give me your answer, do. <laughs> Do. Time for a commercial break. This episode is brought to you by Pall Mall Lights. <laughs> They're blue. They'll Did kill you. Smoke Pall Mall. <laughs> Did oh. it go out? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. You're back. Okay. So sorry. So so I I think the problem with with if if Naha doesn't necessarily get um you know if if you were to send in a shot as is like completely raw no post production then you would see how good of a photographer you actually. Um, are before because there's a lot of people that are just getting away with shooting mediocre stuff and then post production goes insane and they yeah. get a win from it. So, do do you think there's a uh, do you think there's a place in Naha for a <clears throat> a category that's no post production whatsoever? And how do you think that could even be enforced? Really? Um, y you know what I I I I. I as far as right now, like, um, I, I, I think there is, you know, I mean, I don't know who handles the, uh, who's on the, the board of Naha people, but I mean, that, that's up, up for discussion. And if they ever get a lot of complaints, I think that there's still a lot of people that are entering Naha. And there's a lot of people that, want to get that win and whatever it may be. So I don't know, unless people make a, a fuss about getting something like that, you know, just, I don't know. I'm just looking towards the future when technology gets so good. You know what I mean? It, <laughs> you know, yeah. 10 years from now. I, I don't know. I would like to actually see a cell phone category. I, I think that would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you know, cell phone <laughs> camera category. Dude, um, cell phone getting pretty nice though man they are getting pretty chase, nice chase jarvis could get it there yeah, yeah. <laughs> chase jarvis could actually he, he could win something right there man 
Actually, Hairbrain Hairbrain does a couple of those competitions every now and then. They'll do the cell phone competitions, and I think they're really cool because you see people that really put time into it, and then you see people that are just like, "Plack, okay, mail it in," you know. Yeah, but, uh, and I and I, I and I think I think the initial people that hear cell phone, they're just like, "Oh, I'm just going to snap it, like whatever." But then there are people that are trying to be creative with their tool they have. So. Yeah. Now, you, you spoke a little bit on, on video. Uh, a lot of people are going towards video and that kind of thing. Do you, do you kind of see yourself doing a bit more with video, or are you kind of happy with stills? And You know what? Um, I, uh, every big event, uh, all the ABAs, uh, the ice show that I did, um, I try and get somebody to video it uh, just so I can have the footage. And uh, a, a good friend of mine, Fabio Cimentelli, actually said he's just uh, he 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 goes he goes Jake he goes you need to record everything man like you will never get those days back he's like if I could go back and re record all of my contessas and mirrors and all of my photo shoot and all that stuff he's like I, I wish I could go back and record that he's like I don't have that footage and he's like I wish I could go back but. You know what? And like those words, I was just like, you know what? Like, so I strive to video everything, man. Hmm. Just for my own, uh, my own collection, and for post production, I, I want to edit some stuff to where you know I even have videos to show online or whatever it may be. So, well, you got you gotta have clips for uh, when you get your lifetime achievement award, so they can That's... show you through the years. <laughs> or, or if you don't get it, you can have clips to watch when, you, like, at home, just drinking out straight whiskey out of the bottle. Like, nah, <laughs> look what I used to be. Yeah, or, 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 or clips at my funeral. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all, all in slow motion to Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> man, totally, every, time I, every time I hear her song on TV, man, I know it's going to ruin my day. I'm going to see so some really sad puppies. Play a Sarah little McLaughlin. delirium for me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's check. Let's see. I don't think we have any more uh, questions on Twitter. Or the nope. The thing. You got any more questions for Jake there, Damien? Um. Why are your teeth so white? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they're so white, man. Like, um, I you, drink coffee every day. I guess. Uh, are you they sitting don't in front of teeth. a black light right now? <laughs> Is is it, am I really white right now? No, just your teeth. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, maybe it's because I'm surrounded by black. Ah, uh, could be. Could be. Yeah. No socialized dentistry down here, Damon. I could be white. Um, and again, don't look at my teeth. All the worst <laughs> teeth in the world. But you know, it adds to me looking British. Um, what can we expect from uh, Jake Thompson in the future? Where Where are you headed? Uh, you know, um, that is uh, uncharted territory. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to keep producing collections. Uh, that's, that's, that's my passion right now. Like, I, I spend any, of, any and all of my spare time producing as many collections as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, I, as far as you can expect me to hopefully inspire you hairdressers out there. So I'll do my, my hardest work to inspire you and to make you think outside the box. So, Awesome. Well, oh, we did get one more question before, uh, before we go, unless Damon has any more questions. One more question from Twitter. From the Hair Nerds, on a funny note, ask him about the lady who collected hair off your stage at ICE. <laughs> okay. She, so did she want uh, to create? Did she want to do some voodoo on the models? What's um, okay? So so I, I I I was working the Naha room at the ice show in Long Beach, and uh, after I got done doing my because I was carving my avant garde look from scratch, and <laughs> one of uh, this lady comes up and she just is obsessed with the hair and so she starts gathering it and she's like can i can i have this hair can i have this hair <laughs> and she's all kind of bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and i was like yeah 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 it's it's yours go ahead 
you know, and she's grabbing it and she's putting it in her purse and she's just putting, I mean, it, I was, it was kind of a trip actually. So I, I didn't know what she was going to do with it, but. But she was going to disconnect your Skype. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's performing voodoo on you right now, buddy. Oh, that's weird. How weird is that? That's weird. Hair in your purse. Bloop. Alright, let's get him back and then I think we're ready for the lightning round. Oh, here we go. Right, here we back. Okay. So, 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 so with that, so anyway, so no voodoo has happened, so we're good to go. <laughs> so she just, she just wanted to take home a little Jake souvenir. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no voodoo has happened, that's what you say, but she's probably back home with, like, all the hair and, like, a LAN router, and she's, like, <laughs> shoving the hair in the router every right? time you disconnect. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> all right. Uh, you got any shout-outs before we hit the lightning round here, sir? Uh, you know what, man? Uh, I, I, I just honestly want to thank, um, you know, the, 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 the companies that... Uh, supported me and gave me some opportunity this last six months. And uh, my salon, my salon's great. Love Lunatic Fringe Salon. They're phenomenal people there. Shout out to them. And uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Hairbrains. So that's about it. And then, oh yeah, a special shout out to my peeps, the hair nerds. You guys are amazing. And uh, thanks for all the support. So I look forward to seeing you guys down in Vegas for Naha. Awesome. All right, everyone. So this is a new feature on uh, CrossCheck TV. It's the lightning round. So each guest will compete with other guests, and then we'll have a champion. So five lightning round questions. <laughs> Jake Thompson, are you ready for the lightning round CrossCheck? I'm ready, man. Let's do this. All right. Question number one, Jake Thompson. Jake. What is the capital of Canada? Uh, Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct, but not really. It's not? No. Toronto, Montreal. Alberta's not actually, Alberta's a province. <laughs> the answer we were looking for was Ottawa. There you go. Ottawa. Ah, oh, shit. All right, you got four more to go, sir. All Dang. right. Question number two, Jake Thompson. What was the name of Eddie Murphy's character in Beverly Hills Cop? <laughs> um, it is. Uh, hold on, hold on. I know. I know. Isn't it like. Isn't it like Charlie or something? Or. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the name we're looking for? Axel Foley. Oh, shit, that's right. Three more to go, Jake Thompson. <laughs> Sampling the Clash's Straight to Hell song, what song's gunshots were censored on the David Letterman show? What songs... And by what artist? What song's gunshots were... Sampling the song by The Clash, known as Straight to Hell, it was a sample in the song, what song's gunshots were censored Paper when blank. they performed on David Letterman? Um, <laughs> fuck, I, dude, I don't even know, dude. <laughs> MIA's. Paper airplanes. Yeah, MIA paper planes. He said that. I think he should get a point for that. He did say that. I, I, I did like say paper planes, right? Yeah, yeah, you did. Okay, yeah. All right, one. One on the board. Oh, snap! One on the board. All right. Song number four. What is the world's most common first name? Um, it's probably Chinese. Hold on, hold on. It's, uh... Wait, um... Isn't it... Wait, wait, is this... Isn't it, uh... Wait, who, who's the most common... The most common first name, Jake, in the world? 
Muhammad. <laughs> Yay! That's two. That's two. <laughs> Are you ready for the final question, my friend? Yes, sir. All right. So, to hit three, in a barroom brawl, who would win, Tim Hartley or Mark Hayes? Uh... Tim Hartley? Boom! Three out of five on the cross check. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Of course he would win. He's got experience under his belt. Tim That's Hartley, right, man. Brawler. Actually, he used to be a cage fighter back in the day. If you didn't know. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Tim Hartley, cage fighter. <laughs> All right, Jake. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being on the show. Um, we're going to go ahead and end the show with a uh, video that I just added, uh, edited for Sally Rogerson. So uh, stick around for that, guys, and uh, me and Damon will be back. So thanks for coming on a lot, Jake. Thank you guys so much. It was so much fun. I really appreciate it, Damien and Josh and Crosscheck TV. So thank you. Thanks everyone, for being uh, on. Everyone, uh, keep your fingers crossed and hope he wins Naha because he's super free. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it, man. Awesome. Right, Thanks a lot. See you later, Jake. All Bye. right. Video time. Woo! All right. Here comes the video. Where are you guys going? Yeah, that was a little video I edited. Sally Rogerson, who uh, just left Sassoon, and she's an independent uh, educator now. You can find her on Sally Rogerson. So we'll have her on the show coming up shortly, I hope. Uh, that would she be said super she wanted cool. to come on. Be super cool. So, um, yeah, any, any final closing thoughts there, Damien? Not really. My brain's kind of been zonked out all day because it's, uh, it's friggin' hot. Yeah, it's kind of warm down here. Us Canadians don't handle heat well. Yeah, the the eclipse didn't, you know, help cool down anything either. So we had an eclipse down here. So yeah, didn't help cool anything down. So yeah, yeah. Thanks for everybody that really uh, cool. watched though, <laughs> and and remember, you guys, check us out on Twitter at Crosscheck TV, um, cause cause we like Twitter, cause it would and, make us happy. And Facebook dot com backslash. Crosscheck TV. Yes, that's another way that you can reach us. All roads eventually lead to Crosscheck TV. Yep, even our even our website, crosscheck.tv. And you can check out me and Damien's blogs. And yes. We, we write some funny stuff on my, that. My blog that I'm like constantly writing on, like updating every other day and like spending hours writing stuff. I get like 20 hits and then Josh writes like one thing and gets like 500 <laughs> hits. I'm popular. People like me. They like my dirty thoughts. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so that was it. Awesome show with Jake Thompson. I want to thank him for being here. And uh, that's it. So I guess we'll have another show in uh, two weeks, two Sundays from now, yeah? Yep, yep. So, yeah, and we're still uh, confirming the guests, but we got a couple in mind, and we'll keep you guys updated. And, for shizzle. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And, uh, yeah, awesome. Follow us and all that good stuff. I don't yeah. have anything else to say. Oh, yeah, I guess I, we should plug our individual stuff. Now that we've plugged our, we don't stuff. have any individual stuff. My blog is now linked on crosscheck. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm kind of yeah. I still haven't linked all my videos yet. So if you guys want to watch over fifty videos of the live show that I did, over you can go to fifty videos. Over fifty videos. You can go to joshxo.com. You can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com backslash joshxotv. Twitter at josh. You know, it's all on the screen on that info. <laughs> So um, go there. And I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Hairbrain, which uh, embedded that our stream on the front page. That was really awesome. Thank you, Randy and Gerard. And shout out to uh, the Hair Nerds as well. They're freaking awesome. Go to thehairnerds.com and check them out. Tell them cross check sent you. And, I'm just uh, going to ditto all, all of his, all of his you know shout what? outs. We should, get, we should get them on the show, Damien. That would be cool. That would be five of us on the show, but we sh we should get them on the show. I think that that'd be cool. That'd be <laughs> just think of all the Skype dropping outs we could have then. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> it'll be amazing. You know, like be like whack a mole. You know, like answering a phone. It's like hello, hello. But how you answer Skype every time is, can you hear can me? Can you hear? Are you there? I, I, are you there? I, am I? Can you see me? Can you see me now? Oh wait, are you there? Hello. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways. See you guys in two weeks. Thanks for watching. Later, peeps.